Hi everyone, it's April with Hair 101 and we are going to do another color correction today. She, this is my darling niece, I love her. She's the very best, but she decided to color her own hair a few times. And now we have some stripies and she wants to just go all back to her natural color. So what she must have done here, let me just guess, is you put a dark brown on and then you tried to lighten it. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that lightened was her roots when she lightened it because color only lifts natural hair color. Color does not lift artificial color. So if you want to go lighter when you've already put a color on your ends, you have to lighten them out with a color remover or a bleach. She didn't know that because she didn't go to hair school, but I'm gonna teach her right now and I'm gonna teach you guys that too. So that's a big, that happens all the time. People just think, oh, I just wanna go blonde, so I'll stick a light, or light, light brown, so we'll just stick a light brown on my hair. So um, yeah, so we have this middle section that's a little bit lighter than her natural, and then we still have all of this darkness on the ends. And in fact, when you put that color on, did it even make your hair go darker on the ends? Um, or was it about the lighter. same? It was a little lighter? So it probably went a little bit lighter just because the peroxide. So the peroxide does like fade out the artificial color a little bit, but it doesn't remove it enough to make a big enough difference to like, and, and not even nearly as fast as what it does to virgin hair. So that's why you see this color band. And then, then she's grown it out for a few months. So we have the fresh natural regrowth, the hot roots that she had from when she colored it lighter, and then her dark ends. So what we're going to do is we're going to discuss what she ends up wanting to have. And we've done that earlier and she told me that she wants to just have her hair all over back to her natural hair color. And her natural hair color is a five. It's a light brown. And so we're, the end result is going to be level five. So now that we know where we're going, we need to decide where we are. So down here on her ends, I'm guessing this is probably like a level four or even a three. It's pretty dark. So I'm gonna say three just to err on the side of caution so that we make sure we get the color out. So if we're going from a three to a five, we need to lift two levels. So we need at least 20 volume developer. Because it's artificial color and it looks like it's in there pretty good, I might even do 30 and that will make it go a little bit faster. So I'm going to use the Vermisi Decolor Cream Plus on her today and I'm going to probably use you know what, I'm gonna use a 20 volume just because um, I'm hoping to keep a little bit of her um, length. So I wanna keep the integrity of the hair. You could use 32, but mainly we're just going to try to loosen up the color molecules in this hair enough to where they just lighten up to like an orange color. We don't need to get this hair blonde because we're going to be coloring it back to her natural. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through with that formula of the Fermi CD Color Cream and a 20 volume peroxide, and I'm going to apply it from this line right here all the way down. I don't need to lighten this anymore because it's already lighter than her natural hair color. So the first step is just going to be going from the line of the brown, the darkest brown, to the ends. We're gonna do that all over her head, and then we're just going to watch it and make sure that it lightens up to at least this color in here more of like an orangey undertone. And as soon as that's done, we will rinse it off and then we will apply an all over color to her entire head, even her natural regrowth, just so that it all kind of blends in together. And then when it grows out, it will have, the line will still probably be there, but she'd probably only notice it if she pulls her hair down really tight and like this. And to help avoid that when I'm feathering it in, doing the all over color, I could, leave some of her natural roots in and just kind of feather it down there because I have this much room to work with. So that's another way you could kind of avoid making it all dark. And so um, the formula that I'll be putting on at the end after we lighten this out is probably going to be like a level 5N mixed with some of the 6 ash green. And the reason why I'm guessing that we're going to need the 6 ash green is because she's going to have some red-orange undertones and the ash green will neutralize the red-orange undertones. And um, even in here, you can see that this is kind of orange. And the reason why it will be okay to even stick that on her roots, because it will be, it will be fine because it's mixed with the N and with the ash green, 
and also the peroxide will lighten out her roots, her natural virgin hair a little bit too, and it will expose some of that orange undertone anyway. And so that would all be neutralized out and it should blend really well. So we shouldn't be able to see all of these lines as much anymore. So we're gonna get to work. Um, Decolor Cream Plus and 20 volume. I'm gonna do eight strips on the bottom of the bowl. That should be about 40 grams. All right, so this is 40 grams of the Decolor Cream and 120 ml of the 20 volume developer. And this will actually give us closer to three levels of lift. And so just because it's 20 volume developer doesn't necessarily mean it's only two when you're using bleach because the bleach can be a little bit stronger. And you always want to refer to the color chart in and the instructions in the, each individual um, color line that you use. So on the instructions for the decolor cream, it actually says to use 10 volume for two levels of lift and the 20 volume for three levels of lift. And I really like this stuff because it has an oil in it, an oil lightener, and I think it really helps with keeping the hair moist and not drying out the hair, which helps with breakage in the long run. So. And as soon as it tastes just right, you're done. Just kidding, don't eat bleach. Okay, it's ready. All right, so you wanna make sure that you have the proper protection for your clothes and your hands. So once you get that done, you are ready to start parting off the hair. So I'm going to just do a classic tea parting just because that's easy to remember where you're going and where you've been. So that's just all the way down the middle of the head from the front to the back. And then on the top of the head, right here at the back where it starts to roll down, over to the just behind the ears. Yeah, that's cute. Your hair, your head looks very square right now. <laughs> so I'm gonna start in the back here and just, like I said, apply the color, the, the lightning, lightning cream from that line. You wanna make sure you go right to the line. Try not to go past it, but definitely at least get the whole line because you have to get all of the color out or you're gonna have this little band of dark still. And I'm taking fourth inch to half inch partings and I'm trying just to kind of grab her hair by the ends where I'm already gonna be putting the liner anyway. If I start grabbing it right at the roots then she's gonna have little bleach spots because I don't wanna wash my hands too often because I wanna move fast. And I'm making sure that it's applied to both sides so that it's nice and saturated. And I don't need to use foils because I'm not trying to get it close to the head. I'm just throwing it on the parts that we need lightened out. This is just like step number one. If you wanted, if she wanted highlights through this, then I could be maybe doing foils right now too, but I mean, this will be the same with highlights too. You'd be lightening the hair out, so. And I just got bleach on my ankle and it's burning, it's burning. Okay. I don't want to stop though. I have to find a towel. Ow. <laughs> I need a haircut. Oh. This is a rough day for me. I need a haircut really bad and it's distracting me from my work. Hashtag. First world problems. The reason why I felt like I should start in the back is because if her hair for some reason does lighten out pretty fast, I can lean her back and rinse out just the back section of hair and then let the front process the rest of the way if I needed to. Because this takes a little while and so by the time I get to the top and get it all finished, the back might be done. So that's something to think about. A lot of time with hair, like at the end of the cut or color, I can look at it and say, um, yeah, next time I would maybe try this a little bit differently. So it's not really like I regretted doing the hair that way. It's more like I get ideas of things that I would have done better next time. You know what I mean?
All right, I just finished the front of her hair and I ended on this section. You can see that it's still quite a bit darker than this one over here. But I'm gonna put these over in front of her and just let them get the cape really nice and dirty. And I'm gonna lift this up and just wash the cape off really fast because I don't want it to transfer to the back of my bowl and then make her hair or someone else's clothes have bleach on them or whatever. So just make sure you wipe it up, make sure it stays clean. And then that's decent. Okay, we're just gonna lean the chair back and only wash out the ends of this bottom section because they're done. And you can see it has like a red orange undertone to it still. Her hair pretty much looks the same from where she had the, the hot area and the ends all match now. So that's good. So now we're only dealing with two different color types. We're just dealing with her natural regrowth and then this orangey color. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna let the front process for a few more minutes until this side over here looks the same color as this. And I've just rinsed it out. I haven't washed it or anything yet. I just wanted to stop the action of the bleach so that we could get the integrity of the hair to be strong and as healthy as we could possibly keep it. I got bored while I was waiting for that side to process, so I took one little piece of hair out and put some bile silk on it, and then I blow dried it, or actually used Moroccan oil. And I blow dried it just to show you what it looks like now. And that is a lot lighter, just and only processed for like 15 minutes. And it got, and it still feels really healthy, and we're still good. So it's not scary to lighten out a little bit of color from someone's hair. So I was scared of it for a long time. I was like, oh, putting bleach all over someone's hair, like all over it, it's scary. But if you're only lightening out the depth and just a little bit of that darkness, it's not that scary. So now all we have to do to deal with this is to deal with the orange red undertone, which is the green. I could just put a six ash green on this. I don't even know if I need to do the five because it still has good depth to it. So I might actually change what I told you from the beginning and just go through when this is all processed and just paint in that six ash green and um, feather it into her roots a little bit and she'll be good to go. She'll have natural hair back. So let's do it guys. I think this side's ready to go finally. Oh, well, maybe that side still needs a little bit of time. Well, let's think of something else I can do while I'm waiting. This side's done though, so I'm gonna rinse this side. Keep this one out. Okay, we shampooed and conditioned her hair. I need to dry it because when we put a color on over the orange red, it needs to be dry. Otherwise, it won't process correctly. So I'm gonna blow dry it as fast as I can, nothing fancy, and then we're going to do the next step. I am going to stick a little bit of Moroccan oil in it though, just cause that will help keep it from ratting up and it will help keep it a little bit healthier. So that is the one thing I will add. This girl is on fire. She's got flaming hair. It's really, a little bit too white and a little bit orange. And I kind of thought there'd be more red undertones than there is. So I'm thinking that now that I'm looking at it, it's, it's hard because it is an orange undertone, but it does have this little, little teeny bit of reddish to it. So I could, you know what? It'd probably be fine to either use a six ash blue or a six ash green. Both of those will probably neutralize it very similar. So it's just up to you. Hey, look in your cupboard. What one do you have? That's the one you use. I have both of them. And I'm seeing a little teeny bit more. Maybe I'll do both. There's no rules. You can do whatever you want. You could do a green blue base because it's a little bit green and a little bit blue that needs to go in there. So there, so there, I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of this ash green 
maybe I'm going to do, let's say, a half of an ounce. And I really like using these keys because you can really control how much you stick in there. You just roll it down to the half, half um, ounce mark. And let's do a half of an ounce of the blue. And then we'll do a half of an ounce of the 5N. And I'm going to do a little bit of 5N just because her hair is a little bit darker than the ends are right now. And this will help bring a little bit more depth back in. So we have an ounce of ash in there to a half of an ounce of neutral. So it's definitely going to be closer to the 6, but this will just give us a little bit more. And don't be afraid to mix your colors. Since it's a color correction, I don't really have to write this down. I can if I want to keep records, and I think that's a good idea to keep records anyway. But next time she comes in, she's not going to need this formula again because her hair is just going to need... She probably doesn't need to come in anymore because her hair is just going to keep growing out the natural color. And maybe if the ends fade a little bit, she would want you to refresh the ends, but you would use a different color. You would use... I would use a shade EQ because it's deposit only. If, if the ends just lightened up and needed a little bit of toning or depth back into them, I would use, like I would, just guessing here what her hair looks like if it came in faded, it would probably look like her regrowth and then the ends maybe just like an, a natural ombre color. But then that's in right now, so she probably won't even need to come back. So I need an ounce and a half of this because we did an ounce and a half. And it's one to one on these colors. And I like to scrape out the developer because I kind of like my colors to be a little bit thinner. If they get too thick, then you don't have as much. But it's important to measure this right now because she has a lot of hair. And if I run out of this mixture, this exact mixture right now, then I need to recreate it on a smaller scale. So I would do like a fourth of an ounce, a fourth of an ounce, and then another fourth of an ounce of each one of the colors or whatever, like the same square. Like if I just need a little bit more, I know that to do like a line this big of all three of them and then just a little bit of developer in there. So that's why it's important to make notes of what you just mixed up. It's not really for the next time, it's for this time right now. But I took a video of it, so if I need to rewind the tape, I can. So I'm not gonna write it down because I can cheat a little bit, but you should, you should write this stuff down. Have a little post-it note in your cupboard or a little clientele book that you can write things in. Okay, once again, for the application on this, I'm going to do the same parting we did before because that's, you don't have to get crazy creative with partings on this stuff because you're doing the same thing everywhere. So just do a tea parting that's pretty basic. I'm going to just clip them off. Ooh. For the back, I'm just combining these two big sections because I can. So here we go. We're going to be just sticking it on to the orange ends and then feathering it up just a little bit to blend in this line. And the reason why I'm doing that is I don't really want to change the color of all of her roots because, shoot, that's garbage. I don't really want to change the color of all of her roots because she's trying to get her natural hair color back and that would disrupt it to where she had a really harsh line again. Taking about half inch partings. And if you take half inch partings, that's a little bit thick. So you need to make sure that you are getting both sides. So I'm guessing a lot of you won't have this exact situation that you're watching this video to do. And so I kind of tried to make sure that I let you see the process, my train of thought when I'm doing a color correction like this. And what it is, is I first I say, what do we have already? And then number two is I ask, where are we going? What do you want it to look like when it's all done? Once I know those two things, then I can start to formulate. And that's where you need to start thinking of what will achieve the desired results. And there's so many right answers. There's right, wrong and right answers to this, but there's not only one right answer to coloring back hair when you're color correcting. There's probably five different ways I could have gotten this to be back to her natural color. I could have used a 
several different color lines, different colors, and they all would have worked as long as you kept in mind those three different colors that you were dealing with and address them individually instead of trying to do everything all in one big swoop. So keep that in mind. There's not only one right way, but you need to just find the best way that you do it. And this is the way that I would have done it, obviously, because I just did it. Just try to remember that thought process. Where are you? Where are you starting? Where do you want to go? And what do you need to do to get there? I forgot to tell you guys that I use 10 volume developer because I'm just depositing only. So 10 volume. So every once in a while when I get a pretty good thick chunk here of hair, I go through and I just comb down some of the color and this helps make sure that you don't have any spots that got missed because it will brush the hair through all of the color and you can kind of squish it together. And it's a really good way to make sure that you've gotten all the saturated, like the, the parts that weren't saturated. And if there are any tingles in the hair, the color does give it a little bit of a slip so that it kind of comes out a little bit better. And sometimes if there was a really big tangle in the hair, if you didn't comb it out, then the color would only color the top and bottom of it and you'd have a little leopard spot of lightness in there. We don't want that. So make sure that you're combing through the color. Never ever color or comb through lightener though. Lightener will stretch the hair and break it if you comb through, so don't do that. And if you feel like you need to comb through the hair, it means that you're taking too big of sections because the only reason why you would need to comb through is to make sure that the hair was totally saturated. So that's why when you're lightening hair, you need to take a little bit smart, smaller partings because you don't have the opportunity to comb that hair through. And that's any time you're lightening. Even if it's a high lift color, you probably should not brush through it. Bleach, 100% no. Do not ever brush, brush through bleach. But I wouldn't even brush, brush, I can't talk. But I wouldn't even brush through a high lift color with like a 30 or 40 volume because that would be, it's damaging the hair if you're doing that. So some of you might be asking, why did she mix up a six ash blue and ash green if she was trying to get a level five on that girl's hair? That's weird because that's not level five, that's level six. Well, I added a little bit of the level five in there, but the reason why I aired on the side of the lighter was because I did not want her ends to be darker than her natural roots. It's way better to have a more of an ombre effect where the roots are a little bit darker and the ends are a little bit lighter. So I usually air towards the side of the lighter when I'm doing something like this. So that is why I used the six ash blue and I didn't have any five ash blues, but I also think that they, like I said, they would have been a little bit too dark. And I think that this will just really blend a lot better. So that's why if you guys are wondering, I don't know. I think of things that you might ask me when I'm doing hair and I try to answer them while I'm doing it so I don't have to type as much. Is that selfish? Or is it just smart? Okay, her hair's done um, with a color application. I'm going through and just making sure she doesn't have any color on her ears or around her face. And she doesn't because we didn't really stick it all the way onto her scalp. So mostly just on the ears, maybe a little bit on the neck. And then I um, cleaned off her cape really good because I probably could have draped better. I should probably teach you guys the proper way to drape for chemicals and colors and stuff. But um, yeah, so I put a towel underneath here to keep the color off of her cape. And now we're just gonna wait for like 10, 15 more minutes for the process to start, to, or the, um, for the color to finish processing. This color line says to process between 35 and 45 minutes at room temperature. So um, then we'll rinse it out and we'll give her a little bit of a trim and blow dry in style and she'll be out the door with new hair. Yay. Okay. Let's see if we turned her hair green. Cause you guys might be thinking I put green on her hair. So maybe her hair is green. No, it won't be green. I promise. We're rinsing it out cause it's time. We are done rinsing and conditioning her hair from this color this correction. And you look a little bit red because we just waxed her eyebrows. If you guys want to see the eyebrow waxing video, click here. Wait. 
If you want to see the eyebrow waxing video that we just did on her, click right here. There. And make sure you click it eventually, maybe not right now, because you want to watch us color her or show the end result of her hair color, but still, you should go watch it eventually. We're gonna put a little bit of Moroccan oil in her hair, and this just helps me to comb it out, and it's really good for it. It's healthy, keeps it strong and healthy, and smells delicious, so why not use it? I'm gonna comb through it with this denim brush. And it comes through so nice after the Moroccan oil. That's what I love about that stuff. And I'm happy with her color. I think it looks really natural. I think it looks like a really good tone. It's even from, I mean, it's not dry yet, so we can't tell 100%, but it looks already even from roots to ends. So I'm actually pretty happy with it so far. I'm just gonna trim her up. I'm gonna take a half inch to an inch off of her ends. She wants to grow her hair out really long, but just because we've colored it so many times, it probably needs like a half inch off, right, Cass? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna hurry and do that really fast. So I like her hair a lot. So pretty. And I really can't see any difference between her roots and her ends, so I'm happy. Oh, the same color again, all down the shaft. Thank goodness, hallelujah. Woo! No more rainbow hair for you. Come on. Okay, you guys, how do you think it turned out? She's back to her natural color, and it's beautiful. I'm so happy we did this. Okay, so there it is, you guys. There's her end result. Give her a little spin. You can see the back. I've been flat ironing it. She has really curly hair, but she likes to wear it straight, so flat iron is our friend. But yeah, that's it, you guys. I hope you like it. Let me know what you think. Give me a thumbs up if you think that this turned out natural looking. Now she looks like she just never colored her hair. Looks all brand new again. And um, yeah, let me know if this was helpful, you guys. Like I said, even if you don't run into this exact same situation, hopefully it helped you to have a really simple thought process on how to formulate your colors. That's my goal in teaching you this today. So let me know if you have any questions, comment below, and tell me what kind of videos you want me to continue doing, and make sure you guys subscribe, and tell your friends, tell your friends at school, tell your other hairdresser friends, and guess what? I make things sometimes, and I'm crazy, and if you wanna watch my life, because you might think it's interesting, I don't know, you can go check out my life on April's Life channel. And there's a link right here, Make sure you go and check it out. My kids are super, super cute too, so. All right, guys, and I really want to tell you how much I appreciate all of the help that you guys have given me on this journey so far. It's been great, and I'm so excited to keep going and making videos, and I even love running into you out on the streets. Thank you to everyone that's come and said hi. It's making my day every time, and thanks for all the letters, and questions, keep, keep them coming. I will keep trying my best to answer your questions. So thanks, guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye. You'd still be hot. Mm -hmm. Say bye, everybody. Yeah, tell them. <laughs>